In today's episode, I am going to be teaching you how to parse and extract HTML with beautiful soup. Together, we will parse the HTML of the New York Times technology section and take our first steps in extracting the actual article hyperlinks inside the page. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, my name is Rohak and I'm the founder of Empower Code, helping you make a change with technology. Today marks the fifth episode of my course, Data Science for Media Bias Detection, where we will be taking our first steps in extracting actual article hyperlinks from the New York Times. Enough of me talking, let's get right into the code. To start, let's open up PyCharm, the Python IDE where we will be writing our code. Here, let's right click on our project folder, select new and from the drop down menu, click on Python file. Let's name our file news extract because that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now our file is open and we are all set to begin coding. Here, we'll be using beautiful soup and requests. These packages are used to dynamically parse and scrape web pages with HTML extraction. In case you don't have these packages installed, you can run the following commands on Anaconda or Terminal. pip install bs4 for beautiful soup and pip install requests for requests. With that aside, let's import the two packages at the top of our script. Awesome. As you guys can see, I imported requests and from the BS4 package, I imported the beautiful soup class as soup. Awesome. Now let's create a new method called get content string. Once we are finished with this method, we should be able to get a full content string of the HTML containing our article hyperlinks. Now, in order to begin scraping, we need the actual URL hyperlink of the New York Times technology section. Let's pass this in as a parameter and call it URL. Inside our method, let's start off by using the get method of our request module. So here we assign a new variable page to request.get URL. What this line of code does is it sends a get request to the specified URL, which as you will see, allows us to access the contents of the page. So now that we've created this page variable, let's incorporate beautiful soup and access the HTML on our web page. So here, as you guys can see, I've created a new variable called page soup and I'm assigning it to a beautiful soup object. But now inside, we need to pass in a couple parameters to get started. First, we need to pass in the actual content of the page. And we can do that by specifying page.content. Next, since we want beautiful soup to parse the HTML on our page, we can simply enter in html.parser in single quotes. This will let beautiful soup know that it needs to parse our page in HTML. Now inside of our method, let's finish this introductory section off by printing out this page soup. So here we can copy over the URL of the New York Times technology section and go ahead and pass that in into our get content string method. Awesome, now after pasting our URL in and passing it in as a parameter, we can run our code and that is a lot of HTML. It seems like beautiful soup visualized the HTML outline on the New York Times section. <laughs> now that's pretty cool. But remember, our goal here is to extract the recent technology related article URLs. After searching and sifting through this HTML for a couple minutes, you guys can see that this script tag on my screen holds article URLs from the most recent articles. If I continue to scroll down, you can see how many recent articles that this script tag contains. This is exactly what we need. But now another question comes into play. How do we even extract this one tag from all of this HTML? Well, this is where the find all function comes in. As you can see, I created a new variable called containers. And currently, if I call the find all method on this page soup variable, which you can see in this drop down menu, I will be able to pass in a tag of my choice and an attribute if I would like. And beautiful soup will automatically scrape and find that exact tag 
in all of this HTML. So the first parameter I'm going to enter is script because that is the tag that I want to extract. But there are hundreds of script tags in this one HTML outline. How can we narrow it down to the one that we want? Well, if we look at our HTML outline, we see that it has a type attribute, which reads application slash LD plus JSON. If we can somehow pass this type in as a parameter in our find all function, then I'm pretty sure beautiful soup will be able to narrow it down to just this one tag. Well, looking at our find all function, I've now entered in type in the curly braces, entered a colon after that, and then specify the correct type that we want to get. So as a quick overview in our find all function, we first entered the tag that we wanted to search for, which was script. Then inside we used the curly braces specified type as our attribute. And inside our value was application slash LD plus JSON. And remember the two were separated by a single colon. Now this containers variable will return an iterable list of all the tags which match the specifications which we passed in. So let's create a series of nested for loops and extract each tag. First, let's go ahead and initialize an article list which will store all of our tags. Next, let's iterate over each container in our containers list. As you guys can see, if we look back at our HTML, we see several dictionaries denoted by curly braces woven into the tags we want to extract. So inside each container, we can simply iterate over each dictionary and extract the tags and hyperlinks that we want. Once we reach the second level of our nested for loop, we can simply append this dictionary to our article list. Now let's go ahead and print our article list to the console and see what we get. Wow, that is absolutely awesome. Beautiful Soup was able to narrow down all of that giant HTML to one single tag. Now here we see a lot of white space between our dictionaries. So what I've done is I've taken the substring of our article list, which is the first two elements inside, and I'm basically going to remove any white space in those two elements. So the way I do it is I write an empty string and then call the join method and then pass in article.list. And remember, we only want the first two elements. So we type in zero, then two. So now our article list is shortened, formatted, and ready to go. But now if I scan over the individual elements within our list, it seems like there are many duplicates inside. How can we eliminate these? To eliminate these inconsistencies in our list, we can simply make a new variable, call it content string, and assign it to the first element of our article list. Since our article list comprise of many duplicates, extracting the first element will ensure that we have no repeats in our list. Now printing out our content string, we see that it's not a list, but rather a single element containing all of the article hyperlinks that we want to extract. But we aren't finished just yet. Looking closely at our lists, we see that the item list element leads to the actual dictionary with all the proper article URLs and values. If we look behind the item list element, we see that all of this information is unnecessary and quite irrelevant. So if we think about it, we don't really need any of this HTML before this item list element. So let's create a new variable and call it article index. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the index method in Python. So just a little context in Python, the index method takes in a parameter of a character or a set of characters in a string and returns the first index or occurrence where the string is found. So we can call our index method on our content string and pass in item list element since that is the index that we want to extract now that we have our starting index we can reassign our content string to a new substring so to do this we type in content string equals content string and then here we have a little bit of a substring using the article index and then specifying a colon 
to indicate that we're going to start from the index of the item list element and go to the end of our HTML. Awesome! As you guys can see, Python was able to detect the index of the item list element string. And then we were able to take a substring of our content string, start at that index and go all the way to the end of our HTML. But here we notice a slight problem. We still have this item list element portion showing up. We want to narrow it down so that it only shows what's after the item list element, excluding the actual item list element text. So to fix this, we simply add 18 to our article index and then take our substring. This should remove the actual item list element text and give us the HTML that we want. Awesome. Now on my screen, as you guys can see, we have our final content string, which has narrowed down what once was a huge HTML outline into the exact set of URLs and article hyperlinks that we want to extract from. This is the power of beautiful soup, requests, and web scraping. You're able to parse a giant HTML outline and extract exactly the one or two tags that you want by focusing on attributes and tag names. Now we have successfully parsed our HTML with beautiful soup. Let me give you guys a quick recap of what we did. At the start of our method, we got an outline of all the HTML on our web page. Then moving down in our code, we got an article list, a tiny snippet of the HTML outline, which included all of the article hyperlinks that we wanted to extract. Then we need to get a content string. So we pulled the first element of this article list, since the rest of the elements were duplicates and repeats. After narrowing it down to one string, we still had work to do. So we use the index of item list element, which contained all of our article hyperlinks to extract a library of all the URLs and metadata that we need. Finally, we took a substring of our content string with our article index to finish creating our final library and content string of article hyperlinks. This is Python web scraping in action. Well, that is it for this episode. Find out what happens to this HTML content string. The sequel is coming up in the next episode of this video series. If you still have doubts or are confused, the script we wrote together is stored on GitHub. Check the description to access the link. Each and every episode, we are getting closer and closer to our end goal, which is to use Python data science to detect news bias in the media. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next episode.